All right, everybody, we have 10 minutes here with Mr. Nick Loffenberg standing across the table from us, and we're going to talk about something that may, oh, I don't know, what are we going to upset? Change your life? Change your life, (laughs) may make a ruffle a few feathers. For the most part, though, I think it really should make everybody quite happy uh, more than anything. Uh, It's a bit of a life hack. A little, a little kind of, kind of a life hack. Kind it's, of a life hack. Hey, no, it's it's a big time life it hack. It is. Nick. Don't even play around with this. Um, you open Mark and I's eyes to a little thing uh, about the six five Credimore um, that. Oh, I don't know. I mean, this just, is either going to give a lot of people more reasons to love the six five Creed more, or a lot of people are going to go that, that that love to hate on the six five Creed more. They're not again. Right. Not again. This right. is the six five this is the six five Creedmore life hack. We yes. We were out at the range, so to give you guys some color behind this, we were out at the range, we're doing some practicing, some PRSing. And uh, Nick's trying to show Mark and I uh, kind of the ropes here. And you can see on the table between us we have from the uh, sort of home built versus pro built series that we had in our pod venture. This is my rifle, this is my six five creed. Uh, we've done some optics swapping around. Now the Venom 5-25 sits on top of it, um, but we hadn't done, uh, we hadn't gotten data on it in a long time. It had been a while, you know. And mm-hmm. now we're in the middle of, uh, not the middle of, we're in the, in the beginning of summer here, and uh, so we figured it's probably a good idea to get. But of course, by the time we made it out there to the range, we didn't have any of our stuff. We didn't have the chronograph. I mean, it, it was, was kind of an impromptu visit. It was an impromptu visit. And so, Nick... Very casually. Very casually. We're shooting at, I think, it was just 300 to start. He's like, I just dial like one mil. Yeah. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, this is one of those things where when you talk to people who shoot a lot, usually they're going through in their head and they can just spit out ballistic data on certain cartridges. You know, they're just going to, oh, yeah, you got a three-way of this Disney, you're going to hold over this much, whatever. And so I asked Nick, because I like to ask all these people, how did you wind up coming across that, finding that? I'm like, Nick, how did you know that I would happen to need to dial? Like, we don't even know any data on this gun, you know, and how, how do you know that? And uh, your answer was? Take the range minus two. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. If it's 300, so obviously you lop off the two zeros on the end. Three minus two is one, one mil. And I'm like, well... Come on, Nick. I mean, that's some that's some bar room. Yeah, uh, how close math can it be? There, if I've ever seen some, dial one mil, bang on. We hit a uh, eight inch little steel plate at three hundred yards. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, three hundred yards. You know, okay, that's not crazy far. It's it's. I'm sure this whole thing. She's breaks still down. pretty flat at that point. Right. I'm sure you know. this whole thing breaks down pretty quick. Well, I'm like Nick. D- at what point does this break down? You're like, ah, I don't know. I mean, we can we can use it here for a while. So we go out to four. You know, four minus two is two, in case anybody was wondering. Dial two mils. Bang on. Again, hit another, uh, I don't remember what we were shooting out there. Probably another eight-inch piece of steel. Yeah, I think we were shooting about, they were a little bit over two minutes. Yeah. So. And it's getting weird now. We go out to five, dial three mils, hit it again. We go out to six, dial four mils, and we hit it again. It was the most, and this worked, I'm not even joking, out to 800 yards. It was, the, it, was, it was the dumbest and most extraordinary thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I've had a 6.5 Creedmoor for at least eight years, we'll say. Right. And I'm asking Nick, how has nobody brought this up before? Like, how have you been keeping this, in my opinion, secret under your hat? Or is it just common knowledge to very many people? Yeah, does and everybody know this? Are we know. idiots? I, I mean, know. don't answer that. Did you just find one day you were perusing around in your ballistic app somewhere and you're kind of like, oh, that's funny? I think I probably looked at enough data, yeah. uh, drop data throughout the years. It, you just The relations start sticking out. Right. Uh, I will preface this by saying that is this is nothing more than a parlor trick when it comes to actual accuracy. I mean, we're, we're shooting at right. pretty good sized targets once we got past four or 500 yards at that yeah. point. However, if you do not know your data and you're shooting common cartridges like a 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6 Creedmoor, that trick 
if you're shooting mills, we'll get you real close. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'll get you close enough where you're probably, if you're not impacting the target, you're you're really close to impacting the target, and you can correct on it and, mm-hmm. and enter in that actual data and, and, and validate your trajectory that way. That's right. what I was wondering. If you were really in a pinch mm-hmm. and you're like, whatever, you could get an impact, you know, dial, let's say it's 400 yards, so and then you dial your two mills, right? And does this only work with mills? Are MOAs out the window? Well, yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah. Type of yeah, yeah. two I mills mean, is yeah. vastly different from two So away, another yeah. another check plus in the old <laughs> mills category, <laughs> That's I right. guess. That's but right. um, you know, you could get an impact and and then measure with your reticle if you had like a mill based reticle and go, okay, well, actually at four hundred, I should probably be dialing, you know, uh, one point nine, right, or something like that. I think yeah, and we and we we started like massaging it a little bit. I mm-hmm. think we found that like yeah, there was a couple places where we dial like point one under mm-hmm. or whatever. But nonetheless, like you said, Nick, we were getting extremely close. We literally walked out there with not an ounce of data. And the thing is that we were shooting this rifle, and we did the same thing for Mark's rifle. Super Gucci. Every part is different from my rifle. Both mm-hmm. shooting six five Creedmoor. I think the barrel lengths are at least kind of similar ish. But th- mm-hmm. that yeah. That, even in and of itself, though, I mean, totally different rifles. I totally think our different. velocities are pretty darn close to one another. They are pretty close. Uh, but still, nonetheless, it was it was pretty wild. And, uh, you know, somebody like, like me, for example, I mean, I've spent like the last number of years trying to figure out all this stuff around ballistics. We've done how many podcasts around ballistics? All this stuff. Obviously, it's very important. Obviously, mm-hmm. like you said, Nick, we're, we're really not uh, doing it for like this extreme level of accuracy. We're trying to hit big right. pieces of steel relatively. Mm-hmm. But I mean, then when somebody just comes out and they're like, yeah, just take that minus two. <laughs> it's just like, what the heck? <laughs> I'm like, I'm no math magician, right. but right. I can probably handle this one. Seriously. Yeah. You'll I mean, find a lot of cartridges hang around a muzzle velocity, just at least in the realm of about 2,750 feet per second. Mm-hmm. Like finding a fast 308 shooting like that, a, a slower 6, five, or six Creed more, about average 6.5 Creed more. So I use 6.5 Creed more because, you know, if we got 10 guys on a line or a few guys bring their own rifle to a training class and, hey, man, you know, what's your velocity? Let's get you some data. And they're like, oh, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> let's find out, you know, and, and use that and it, it works. Like, very often mm-hmm. um obviously the variables of you know temperature barometric pressure all that stuff comes into play your zero range comes into play if you use a 200 yard zero this basically won't work anymore sure um 100 yard zero is important but yeah other than that i mean again it's, it's like it's, it's crude, to get you in the effective, ballpark right yeah you know to a point could it even be used as one of those uh sometimes there's little tricks to get a closer a closer to reality than the back of the box would tell you tell you muzzle velocity uh, without a chronograph. Is there is there some things you could do? Because I know like as long as you can plug in maybe what values, uh, uh, as long as you can plug in the values that the back of the box of ammo uh, would give you into your ballistics calculator, it'll spit something out that may not mm-hmm. be perfect. But it'd be... and then you can also dial this and compare and contrast, and then you know as long as you have a few known values in there, right. and you've got some real world data going down range. You can actually kind of deduce a better muzzle velocity. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's just that trajectory validation. Like, just take my my personal hunting rifle, which I'm shooting. Well, when I'm shooting match bullets out of there, if we're just playing around, I'm shooting 147 ELD match, um, and they're shooting 27. 50 about that uh at 300 yards i'm 1.1 so i'm within a tenth of a mil yeah at a thousand yards i'm 8.1 so i'm within a tenth of a mil uh but bringing into five or four five and six hundred yards i'm actually four tenths off so four that's tenths. where it deviates the most but so it, get, it starts close it deviates and then comes back to accurate interesting yeah so it, it comes down to the bc the velocity all that stuff comes into play how fast the bullet is decelerating all that um so yeah, yeah. drag coefficient does matter um but in those closer ranges at three four and five hundred yards you can use that with a lot of cartridges and it works because at that range muzzle velocity is going to be a very large factor and there i mean the closer you are the less that factor matters too okay right yeah, yeah. i like it yeah it was it's fun. fun. It was oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is it is fun, and it, it always explodes people's minds when you show them that too. It does because everybody just overthinks things so many right. times. Oh, well, we have those you know 
big three quarter ipsix at three, four, five, and six, you know, and you know, during a training class, I'm gonna say, Hey, take this rifle. What do you, what's my dope? Don't worry about it. You know, you just <laughs> ding, 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 and they're like, Oh, mind don't blown. Need it. Yeah, yeah, don't need it. Don't need it. I'll will it on the target. That that's some <laughs> that's some David Blaine stuff you guys yeah. can pull if you've heard this podcast and your buddies have it, you can pull it like you said. I like that. Just <laughs> Get behind a rifle. You don't even know any data. Don't yeah. eat it. Yeah. <laughs> or better yet, you can be like, what are you shooting? 6.5 Creedmoor? Yep. What are you shooting maybe 140, 147s? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 2750 in that ballpark? And just pretend like you're doing a calculation yeah. in your head mm-hmm. and then just mm-hmm. go ring steel. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe lick your finger, you know, hold it up in the air. Okay, yeah, yeah I got this. Smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pressure's changing. I like this. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> That's good. Well, uh, let's hear, if anybody out there, if you've heard of this life hack and you've used it, let us know. Also, if you've got any other life hacks for out there on the range that just oh, make yeah. the shooting experience at the range just so much more simple, uh, you know, good enough for get you, getting you on steel and having a good time, why don't you drop those in the comments below here on uh, if you're watching on YouTube or also head over to Instagram and comment there. Uh, Nick. Thank you. Yes. Not only thank you for joining us on the podcast, <laughs> yeah. but also for this uh, this wonderful trick. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, un- until next time, if you got a six five creed, and you probably do, uh, take the range minus two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still giggle every time I hear. It. All right. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Nick.